The Seafood Watch program started at Monterey Bay Aquarium where we were handing out convenient pocket guides to our guests. Today we have more than 100 partner institutions across the country trying to educate consumers and businesses to make ocean-friendly seafood choices. Seafood Watch has a team of researchers making sure that we're getting you the most up-to-date, science-based information about the seafood to avoid and the seafood that is farmed or fished in an environmentally responsible way. We invite you to train yourself and your staff with the valuable information in this training program so you too can help us spread the word and ensure healthy oceans for future generations. Fish are the last wild animals that we actively hunt for on a commercial scale, and scientists are concerned they simply can't keep up with the hunt. Basically, we're overfishing them, meaning they can't reproduce quickly enough to keep up with the ever-intensifying hunt. Scientists warn us that 90% of the big fish may be gone, fish that we know and love like tuna, swordfish, and shark. We're now hunting the last 10% of some of those populations. To make sure we don't catch too many fish, governments across the globe have set catch threshold limits and implemented other measures to ensure healthy, abundant populations. Now there are some entities out there that are actually helping to eco-certify fisheries that are well-managed, healthy, and abundant. The Marine Stewardship Council is an international body that's currently taking this challenge on. Jim Humphreys is going to explain further. The Marine Stewardship Council is a global fisheries eco-labeling program. For a fishery to be certified, it has to have healthy fish stocks, minimal ecosystem impacts, and an effective fisheries management system. One of the first fisheries certified was the Alaska salmon fishery. And the Alaska salmon fishery has a very effective fisheries management system that is uh, run by the Alaska Department of Fishing Game. Uh, the fish stocks and, and the catch from that fishery have, have been fairly stable since about 1958 or 59. And the um, impact of the fishermen and the gear that they use on the ecosystem uh, is, is relatively uh, minimal. Now, if fisheries aren't strictly managed, there can be some pretty serious consequences. One of the classic examples of a fishery that's had uh, serious problems and, and collapsed was the Newfoundland cod fishery. Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 30,000 jobs were lost in Newfoundland as a result of that. Uh, the cod stocks have never really come back. Uh, up in that part of the world. This isn't just about fish, it's about the people who rely upon those fish in their communities and the people who rely upon those fish for food. The reason that, that fisheries management plans and healthy fish stocks are so important is that those can ensure that those stocks are going to be there for hopefully for uh, you know the foreseeable future and, and beyond that. There are a lot of seafood choices from healthy and abundant fish populations. Use the Seafood Watch Pocket Guide or look for the Marine Stewardship Council Eco Label in stores near you. Not all fish that are caught make it to the table. Some marine life accidentally gets entangled in fishermen's nets or on their baited hooks and needs to be thrown overboard, sometimes dead or dying. Now, I would love to say that these numbers are pretty low, but unfortunately, every year more than 7 million tons of sea life is thrown overboard, almost a quarter of the U.S. catch. This is called bycatch. An example of a fishing gear with high levels of bycatch is pelagic longlining. Fishermen deploy up to 60 miles of baited hooks that are left to soak in the oceans, sometimes for days, attracting anything that swims by. Longliners may be targeting species such as swordfish and tuna, but also commonly catch marine mammals, sea turtles, and even seabirds and sharks. These species are usually thrown overboard dead or dying. Shrimp trawlers are among the worst when it comes to high levels of bycatch. When these large nets are towed through the oceans, they literally catch everything in their path. When the nets are dumped onto the deck, typically you'll find one pound of shrimp for upwards of 5 to 15 pounds of other marine life. Nobody wants bycatch, especially fishermen. So, a lot of fishing gear has been modified to minimize the amount of unintentional catch. Now, when Seafood Watch evaluates fisheries, we look specifically at the rates of bycatch and what measures are being taken to mitigate these issues. Now, just think about what's going on underneath the water. There are kelp forests, rocky features, and all this, it's habitat to a myriad of species of fish and other marine life. 
and these species actually rely on habitat for their very existence, for feeding grounds, shelter, and breeding grounds. But let me show you something. Some of the methods used to catch fish literally drag large nets along the seafloor. Picture it this way. Just like loggers clear cut a forest, some of this heavy fishing gear literally drags along the seafloor, destroying the habitat that fish and other marine life rely on for survival. When the Seafood Watch program evaluates fisheries, we look at the fishing gear and specifically research into whether or not it's having negative impacts on the marine habitat. The oceans alone can't meet the growing global demand for seafood. Fish farming, also referred to as aquaculture, has grown exponentially over the past few decades to help create a supply of seafood. Dr. Rebecca Goldberg will share with us, however, that not all fish farms are created equal. There are a number of challenges facing salmon farming. A lot of them stem from the fact that salmon are raised in net pens or net cages, which are just what they sound like. They're literally um, net-like structures that are put directly in coastal waters. So what's in a salmon pen flows into coastal waters. That can include large quantities of salmon waste, any drugs that are used in salmon production and so on. So water pollution is an issue. But these net pen or cage structures are also quite vulnerable to escapes of farm fish. Most of the salmon that are farmed around the world are Atlantic salmon. And in areas where Atlantic salmon are not native, there's a lot of concern that these escaped fish are establishing reproducing populations, which may compete with wild salmon. So there's a lot of concern about the ecological impact of farm salmon on wild salmon populations. Having a, a lot of animals of any type, be they fish or people in, in a concentrated one area, tends to, to spread disease. It's like having a lot of kids in daycare. Um, you, you get outbreaks. And in the case of of farm salmon, there have been big issues, particularly with salmon parasites that build up in, in salmon pens, and when wild fish swim nearby, they can pick them up. And um, there's increasing evidence that salmon farming is harming some really vulnerable wild fish populations. Salmon are naturally carnivores. They're meat eaters. When people farm them, salmon are fed diets that are high in fish meal and fish oil that are made from wild caught fish. And in fact, it takes close to three pounds on average worldwide of wild caught fish to grow one pound of farm salmon. So we actually lose fish in the production of most farm salmon. Farming salmon is not an alternative to fishing. Many people want to promote fish farming as a way to take pressure off of wild populations or at least provide an alternative supply of fish. And that's just not true with salmon farming as it's now done. Seafood Watch has identified a number of great sustainable farm raised choices for you to select from. Shellfish farming produces things like oysters, mussels and clams and abalone that are great sustainable seafood choices. Great farm raised finfish includes catfish, rainbow trout, U.S. farm raised tilapia. These are all choices that have been farmed in an environmentally responsible way. And mark my word, if done correctly, fish farming will help create a viable supply of seafood into the future. Shrimp is the most popular seafood item in the United States right now, and a lot of it is actually farm raised. The Seafood Watch program is concerned that some of the shrimp farming operations are having negative environmental impacts. Shrimp ponds in developing countries may lack safeguards that the Seafood Watch program believes need to be in place to ensure the environment is protected. To meet our demand for shrimp, thousands of acres of coastal habitat have been destroyed to make room for shrimp ponds. The wastewater from these shrimp ponds are sometimes dumped into the surrounding environment totally untreated, polluting local coastal waterways. Seafood Watch has found shrimp farms that do address these environmental concerns and are using better management practices to produce shrimp. We right now recommend U.S. farm raised shrimp as a great alternative to some imported sources. So keep visiting our website at seafoodwatch.org for the latest information.